Hello everyone, Chris here, and today I'd like to show you all how to stream straight to YouTube using their live events system and open broadcasting software. Of course, you don't have to use OBS, you can also use XSplit, any other broadcasting software, or Google Hangouts itself, which is uh, the integrated way to stream straight to YouTube. So to start streaming, you first got to go over to Creator Studio, which is part of your YouTube channel page. You can find that uh, over here in the settings menu, going down to Creator Studio, right there. Uh, then video manager, live events, and you got to schedule a, a new event. Now, you can either schedule this to be right now immediately, which in many cases I think would be kind of strange if you want to do a live event immediately uh, and prompt to, um, but you can if you want to. Normally, you would schedule it for a future time, possibly a few hours from now, possibly a couple days from now, so you can at least give your audience a chance to uh, realize that you're about to stream so that they can be there when you start and that you're not talking into a void. Uh, so we're going to leave this as today, but we will give it a title. Uh, we'll say test private because, I mean, we don't want to stream this to the channel. Um, now, of course, one of the most important things you got to choose is your type. The quick type is just to use Google Hangouts on air, which if you've ever used Google Hangouts to talk to other people, your friends, your family, it's uh, similar to that, but with a lot more additional features. Uh, it's fine to use that, but many people prefer to use open broadcasting software or XSplit, even, or especially rather, those in the gaming community. So we're going to go ahead and use custom here, uh, since we are in fact using OBS. Okay, we'll set it to 10, though it doesn't actually have to be precise. If you set it to a time and then you start sooner, that's fine. The starts and end times are really only for your audience, so they know when it's expected to start, but it doesn't actually have to be the exact timing. Of course, you can check your advanced settings. Usually, I would leave this as it is. The important things in here are enabling your live chat so that your audience can interact with you, automatically block spam messages, um, you don't want people bugging your audience and making everybody leave. And I would say enabling your DVR so that viewers who do come into your uh, live stream um, at a point in time that's after the immediate start can actually go back in time before the broadcast is finished and check out what they missed. Uh, I'd say it's nice to let your viewers do that. And monetization if you want. One of the advantages of YouTube over something like Twitch TV is that you can directly monetize your videos. Um... Oh, not your videos, rather, but your live stream events, uh, because, of course, YouTube has Google AdSense, and it's not hard to insert videos using the in uh, ads using the interface uh, straight into your videos. Whereas with Twitch, uh, they don't really allow monetization, or at least direct advertisement monetization, of your live streams unless you become one of their trusted partners, which is very hard to do. Only one, I don't even know if 1% of people make it to do that. I certainly haven't. Um, anyway, once all your settings are good, you can go ahead and create the event. If you were streaming to Google, Google Hangouts and you had it set to now, it might say just go live instead. But either way, it's going to be that button up there in the top right or the bottom right. So go ahead and create event and it should take you to a new page where it's going to basically say, okay, we're waiting on you to uh, do some other stuff and go live with it. So thumbnails for uh, your live event. Usually this is something that you really do want to have, especially if you're going to tell your viewers ahead of time, so that when they see your event in the video feed, they can see the thumbnail just as if you were publishing another video. Uh, thumbnails are very important, you know, having that graphical thing to see and recognize what you are talking about is very nice to have. So you definitely want to enable a f thumbnail. But the important thing here when you are working with OBS is to choose your ingestion, and you're going to have to, I believe, create a new s stream. Let's call this OBS. I haven't actually set it up with this channel. And as far as bitrate goes, uh, you can find out your upload bitrate by uh, basically Google searching. I, I forget the name of the site. We'll just check it out right now. Um, upload bitrate test. I forget what it's called. Uh, da, 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 da. Bandwidth test. Let's go with that instead. Ah, speedtest.net. I believe that's the one I normally use. And you can use this site and it will basically tell you your upload and download speeds. I know mine is currently about uh, 2 Mbps, which is 2,000 kilobits per second. 
Um, so we will set that to... You could probably get away with um, 720p. In fact, I know you can because I've done it before. So we'll just set it to that. And this is for streaming with OBS. This description, of course, is just for your own reference. So go ahead and put that in. Bam. Of course. Then you're going to need to choose an encoder. And this is, I believe, where you actually choose OBS. So you go to Other Encoders, and it's going to give you a whole bunch of random numbers and stuff. And this is what you're going to need to take over into Open Broadcasting Software itself. You can optionally choose to include uh, a closed captioning, but you need other software for that. It's not necessary for a default stream. So in OBS, you got to go to Settings, Broadcasting Settings, Live Stream, and there'll be an option for YouTube. Primary YouTube and just server. And of course, you need to copy and paste this primary server URL. Bam. Or oh, wait, no, it's the stream name, I would think. Could be wrong. Okay. And you may want to listen to this, uh, these settings. If it says optimize, usually it's just a good idea to do so. Uh, you can mess with it later, and usually it's a very good idea to test your streams before you really do go live with the real thing. Uh, you can do that, of course, by setting your event or a test event to private so you can mess around with it. But we will go ahead and do that. I could be wrong here, but I think that's good. So once you've put in all the settings, uh, all you got to do is hit the Start Streaming button. But a couple things to check before you go ahead and do that. Uh, usually these are the things that are going to mess you up. First off, your encoding bitrate set through OBS itself. Normally I would say set this to about 90% of your max upload. So if your max upload is 2000 or 2100 kilobits per second, not kilobytes, keep that in mind, then set it to about 1800 and that should be consistent. Uh, as you can see right down here, uh, it's hovering about 1800, 1900. Sometimes it goes a little over the limit you set, but as long as it's green and you have zero dropped frames, that is really important. You want to make sure that your viewers are seeing everything smoothly. So make sure that bit rate is definitely no higher than your max bit rate, but probably a little bit under it. Secondly, you want to make sure that you're streaming with the same resolution as you set on the YouTube settings. So you can see that my desktop uh, has a 1920 by 1080 monitor resolution. But um, one option you can do in OBS, instead of shrinking the size of the uh, screen that it's going to pick up on itself, you can downscale it using this setting right here to bring it from... 1080p down to 720p or 1280 pixels by 720 and then that'll give you the resolution you need on youtube because of course we set the obs ingestion to be 720p so from there we can go to the live control room since uh, it, it's not actually going to be showing right now even though uh, even though we are technically streaming, it's streaming to YouTube, but YouTube isn't uh, publishing that live to viewers or subscribers on your channel. Uh, but what you'll see here, if your stream is bad, possibly your upload rate is uh, set too high, it's not getting a, a good pickup on your signal, it might say bad here, and it will give you the reasons why right here. Uh, there might be some you know, weird error messages that you don't understand, and you could Google search that, or even ask in the comments down below if you see something like that. Uh, otherwise, you'll see good with the resolution you set, and you can go ahead and check out the preview stream. So we'll go ahead and do that. Of course, I'm going to mute this right here, uh, even if it does show. Uh, I think the reason here is because I have to actually hit preview. Yeah, so we'll go ahead and do that. So, all right, so I actually had to restart the stream to get it to show in the preview box, uh, but there was no other settings that needed to be changed. So good to go. Just make sure you see it in the preview window right. before you go ahead and hit start, and I don't need to hear myself there. But once you've ensured everything's good to go, you notice that your frames per second is fine, you can hear yourself, then you can go ahead and hit start streaming when you're ready. Of course, there's other settings here, but I can get that into future videos. If you're interested, just let me know in the comments down below. We'll finish this by live streaming. 
Uh, of course, this is a private live stream, so no one ever gets to see this but me. And you'll notice it'll say live, it'll start recording, and from there, just do your thing, uh, whether it's playing a video game, whether it's just doing a vlog, whatever. Then you should be able to make sure, absolutely sure, that people can see it by going down here to the public view. And this is what people can actually see when they go to your live stream event from your channel, when they uh, view the published version. Uh, and you want to make sure that's working too. And then, bam, we have it. So, so as I was saying, just make sure that your audience can see you, that you're good to go, and that you check in with the comments every uh, now and then. You can see them here. I believe if you also just jump straight to your video page, which you can do by copying the video URL, jumping in here, going straight there, and then while you are live, the live chat will pop around down here, and you can interact with your audience if you uh, manage to set things up to look at that. Now, doing a good broadcast, that's a whole other uh, deal. If you want, let me know. I'll get into it. But aside from that, I've been Chris. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you found this video useful, uh, and I will catch you all next time.